scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. I totally dislike this honor. I don't hate those who communicate it, but I hate everything about this honor. This honor is not only sin, this honor is evil. This honor is the deliberate refusal to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate the uniqueness of a person. That's what this honor is an intentional refusal. This honor seeks to trivialize people. So when they say, Hey, Jimmy is such an an intelligent person he's such an anointed man you seek to bring a factor to show that he does not warrant that level of acknowledgement there are people like that dishonor can be a habit are you hearing what i'm saying dishonor can be a habit let's go and tell our parents thank you for what for what what did they do it's a habit this honor can be as addictive as this, this thing this guy gave testimony about. Tramol, tramadol. Yes, you can be addicted to dishonor. Because every time you dishonor a man, you try to use, there are two ways to grow tall. Climb something or cut the head of everybody above you. Dishonor seeks to do that. So because of your frustration to climb and rise, you try to cut down everything so that they will look like you it's a terrible attitude i watch it all the time i've driven everything and i continue to do it intentionally you never dishonor me and hang around me no matter who you are young or old i honor people but if you dishonor me i draw a line and supervise that that line remains i hate dishonor it is devilish i will not dishonor anyone but I will not tolerate dishonor. Not as if, I'm very outspoken about that one. Dishonor is dangerous. He said, those who honor me, I will honor. But he that despises me, I will likely esteem. Honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. Honor, your attitude is important. God watches how you do it. That's what makes it honorable. Hallelujah. Honor is the recognition the acknowledgement, the celebrating, and even the rewarding of value. Brothers and sisters, our world is full of people who are valuable. Wives are valuable. Husbands are valuable. Ladies are valuable. Men are valuable. There are cultures that train men to dishonor women by default. The philosophies of those cultures were designed to ensure that a full grown man cultivates an appetite for intentionally dishonoring a woman and there are many ways to communicate that unfortunately there are also cultures and philosophies that more dangerously programs women to dishonor men we live in a generation right now where anything a man can do a woman can do and so she does not see any basis of honoring the man you are earning 50,000, I'm earning 100. You bought a car, I bought a car. You are a doctor, I'm a doctor. You are a public speaker, I'm a public speaker. If you drive me out, I have property somewhere. So the woman, that's why successful women hardly 
enjoy good marriages because there is a side effect until the Holy Spirit tames a woman to that position where she understands and subscribes to divine order society and sadly relationship experts have contributed in no small way to advancing this demonic doctrine where a woman's loyalty and honor to a man is based on obvious reasons so if the man loses his job the woman believes she has a legitimate right to dishonor him no sir society marks it yes god marks it no it's up to you to choose remember the power to choose is still there so my assignment is to present the word of god and leave you to choose you can say this 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 apostle has come again no problem but one thing is that for every choice you make be ready to also prepare for the consequences love is honor never say you love anybody you dishonor no i love children and they fall and you leave them there you don't love children i love jesus no where is your giving i forgot no you don't you don't honor him i love my wife really i love my husband i love my business you must preserve through honor i said something that maybe let me just say it quickly and then we'll go to today's teaching true honor is mutual say it after me true honor is mutual one more time if honor is one-sided it turns the one give because you see honor is a sacrifice honor many times can be ego stinging especially for men it is not in a man's natural disposition to turn and honor his wife or subordinate it's easy to honor someone obviously higher than you but the bible says honor all men you see that so it is not in man's natural disposition to honor so if and when he does it there must be a reciprocation we honor the lord through our worship he honors us back by confirming our words with signs following it is always mutual a business where only one person is honoring the people the ceo honors his staff and the staff do not see a need to intentionally honor the honor must be vocal otherwise it is not honor you don't honor in your heart alone it's not true you must find a way of vocalizing your honor by vocal i don't just mean communicating it in speech alone there must be action there must be motion to back up honor are we together yes you honor the lord let me see it in your giving let me see it in your loving him let me see it in the sacrifices why do you call me lord and do not do i don't see a corresponding action honor must be mutual if a husband honors the wife a wise wife will find a way of reciprocating the honor immediately as soon as possible not after five years no visitors come to your house and your wife prepares a wonderful meal and people say ah your wife can cook imagine not love i say well uh, that, that's what god can do that's not honor enough that's pride that's pride yes it is that's the name it's called pride the man must find a way you see that of appreciating the same thing with the woman my god what a beautiful house say, ah, have you forgotten i learned interior decor no that's not the issue madam you would have been broke if that man did not provide money don't pretend that okay but he brought half of the money it doesn't matter that half played a role a wise woman hides her glory and makes sure that the husband is seen just like the sun and the moon the glory of the sun is reflected in the moon but the glory comes from the sun honor is mutual ladies say it honor is mutual gentlemen say it honor is mutual so if the music director acknowledges the people and say gentlemen you are a brilliant team they should find a way not a pretentious way there's a way somebody talks you know that i don't even like what you are saying you will hardly have fights and quarrel when there is an intentional covenant of communicating honor 
Do you know why honor is important? Because challenges are inevitable. Honor is like a cushion that prepares for the days of challenges. So that in the midst of the harshness of the challenges, you remember, don't forget the fact that we are quarreling today. Remember yesterday, I lavishly communicated honor. So it will cushion the effect. When there is no honor, when trouble comes, it wounds more than intended because there was a foundation of trouble. Is God speaking to us? That's why it's difficult to forgive in many relationships, family relationships, because there has been an accumulation of dishonor. The wife to husband or husband to wife. You can earn a living practicing honor. There are people in life I'm eternally indebted to. They have, they have, they have bought me over literally through honor. There are people who the door of favor closed in their life because there was no honor. Be sensitive to honor. Learn it. You will look like a fool until the blessings start coming. Hmm? In business, practice honor. In marriage, practice honor. In relationship, practice honor. Don't say I did it once. No. Honor. Let's get to today's teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Is God changing us? Please be determined to practice this. Our apostles are from that village. No, we have been called out of every tribe, tongue. Nobody is talking village here. Nobody is talking ancestral cause. I don't care what your father worship. God is giving you a chance now to wash yourself with the word and come out of all these demonic excuses that people keep bringing that is shredding lives and families and opportunities into pieces. Honor. Honor can schedule a season that should not be there. Honor can schedule a season that should not be there. Somebody did not plan to bless you that far, but honor forces him to extend more than intended. I've been a victim of it. People have honored me in such a way that I, I watch myself like I was spellbound, doing more than intended because of honor. This honor can also shorten the life of favor. Favor can have an artificial half-life because of dishonor. I plan to bless you for five months. Dishonor made it reduced to two weeks. These are the systems of the kingdom that we must learn. Are we learning? The next thing we are going to discuss, very interestingly, what's the title of tonight's message? What is love? Continued. In any relationship, especially love relationships, there must be clarity and definiteness of motives, roles, and expectations. In any kind of relationship, there must be clarity and definiteness of motives. One, two, roles, three, expectations let's discuss this clarity of motives clarity of roles clarity of expectations fight and quarrel all kinds of untold pain remain the lot of any individual who trivializes clarity come sir Let's assume Sam works for me. Look up, everybody, please. There is something called an employment letter. Is that true? When you get a serious job, they give you an employment letter. Contained in that letter are certain details. One, the name of the corporation or whatever job you are doing. Number two, a definition of your task and then whatever level number three the privileges that accompany what you are doing leaves leave grants and all of that is that true number four there are details there to the hr department or whatever it is for further information they call it your employment letter so they give it to you 
congratulations and they give you a few details that becomes the basis of your remaining and functioning in that company is that true and then furthermore for most corporations there is a season of orientation is that true especially for very specialized jobs where they give you details of what you should do they tell you in that corporation everybody is not the same there is somebody called supervisor there is somebody called director there is somebody called manager you don't behave to all of them the same way clarity of motifs clarity of roles clarity of expectations if your salary sum is 200,000 and I pay you 120,000 you have a basis of complaining you can go to the HR department or the finance department and say sorry based on my job I have an expectation of 200,000 and it looks like I'm being shortchanged and any decent uh, outfit should be able to look into the matter is that true even if they are unable to meet that standard they owe you an apology for violating your expectation is God blessing us thank you so much sir. are we together now this is very important most relationships start naturally which is wonderful but most relationships don't remain naturally there are hardly any friends aside from maybe your wife or husband that you have to take out time articulate yourself ask out wait for answer most friends most friendships start naturally either because you are workers in the house of god is that true or you are classmates or business colleagues because of the the natural effect most times we think that because it came naturally it must be natural so i want to start a business and i tell sam there's this idea and sam says wow can i come in now look at this that is a dangerous thing that has happened because when sam came in there was no definiteness who is the business for they all say let's the most important thing is let's trust god for this thing to work now you didn't expect it to be so successful you thought you may make 30,000 and in two months you made 5 million. And then you just turn and say, Sam, I just felt like appreciating you. And Sam drops the money and says, you are joking. Appreciation? We travel to Abuja together. He said, come, I hope you are aware that this is my business. And Sam said, that was not, there was no clarity. Is God speaking to us? No clarity. The same thing. A guy just holds a lady and says, let's just be close. And for nine years, they are like that nine solid years listen 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 calm down no turning faces look at me i'm the one talking for nine years a young man is working for someone he doesn't know whether he's employed or not he doesn't know whether he's entitled to a salary or not. He doesn't know whether he's a protege. He doesn't know whether he's employed. He's there for 12 years. They employ people in his presence. He's always the one that helps the boss. He's been cleaning shoes for 10 years. Without clarity, there is no progress. There is no basis for creating progress. So a man gets into all kinds of friendship. And then there are all kinds of parasitic experiences because there was no definiteness of motives. Listen, I am friends to Sam, for instance. I want to be a friend to Sam. And then Sam is a friend to me. It is costly to believe our motives are the same. I may come to Sam because I, had, I just like the guy and I think that he's able to help me achieve something. There's nothing wrong. Sam may come to me because he has struggled and suffered and he's hoping now those various the 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 variations in motif will create the variations in commitment are we together if sam's purpose of coming to my life is just that i help him with a house rent and that's it you don't expect Sam to be committed when I'm telling him, Sam, let me give you my 20-year plan. Sam says, that's not my basis of being here. I'm here for you to help me with rent after which I don't know you again. 
is that is that true that's why nobody permit me to to use this expression nobody ask a prostitute what's your background where where's your father from you mean you are this tribe did you ever go to school no the man can get up and walk in the daytime and not even know she's the one jacob leah i mean by morning jacob said ah you mean it was you so that ex that it it can happen how many relationships go unrewarded because there was no clarity how many of us live unrewarded lives in utter frustration how many businesses are unrewarded how many people have been used their potentials have been used you are a graduate you are a first class person your uncle says just come around let's see what happens five years you are still coming around you are doing the work of a a, a staff you are doing the work of um um, whatever you are doing the work of a husband work of a wife work of a doctor he can call you and quarrel you during the staff meeting you are there but there's no salary unrewarded lives because there is no clarity God spelled out what you will get in this kingdom and what you will not get all no man who lives father mother house this for my name's sake in this life this is what you will get but let me be honest with you, there will be persecution. He didn't lie to you. He said, with persecution. We, we put ellipses when we are writing those scriptures. Complete it in, with persecution. Because your success will be so notable, it will attract unusual repercussions. Let's discuss this. Thank you, sir. Can I talk about this? Write it down. Motifs. Let's take the first one. Motifs. Motives are very important. Another word is intention. Motives. Your intention for seeking God. You've heard me drum it here in Koinonia. It's, it's an anthem here. Your intention, your motive for wanting a wife, your motive for wanting a husband, your motive for wanting a job, your motive for wanting certain levels of influence, if not defined, can end you and the other parties involved in utter frustration i've said it that motives determine levels of commitment the clearer and more sincere and more long term the motive the greater and the deeper the commitment there are things in my life that i don't have a long term affiliation to because I don't intend to stay long around them. It shows in my commitment. There are things that are a matter of life and death for me. It shows in my commitment. Many relationships, sadly especially love relationships and even marriages, are built on wrong motives. And this is the foundation for frustration. There are many kinds of reasons why people relate. Especially... In, in the area of love, marriage, and the rest. I think for me, one of, the, one of the, the most dangerous and destructive motives for love is pressure. Pressure. The pressure to exit singleness has made people to make very fatal marital mistakes. The pressure to manage loneliness have made people to get into relationships without thinking of the implications. Pressure. There are people who have gotten into all kinds of things, from businesses to individuals to groups to clubs to associations, even to churches, as a result of pressure. I've seen people who come to a to Koinonia like this and see how wonderful the worship team um, you know how they are and the wonderful things they are doing and out of pressure not out of revelation I want to be part of this they are carried away by the flamboyancy and forget that for every performance here there is time for rehearsals and it can be very discomforting though rewarding pressure Especially for our dear sisters. I love you with all my heart. But the truth is that many of our sisters need help. The pressure to exit singleness 
sometimes caused by parents sometimes caused by movies sometimes caused by an awareness of the passage of age and time now they are sincere don't get me wrong but it's still pressure are we together the pressure to exit singleness can be a wrong motif the pressure to make money fast can be a wrong motif and will not allow you to patiently build systems that last pressure wrong motives pressure to exit singleness people get into relationships as a way of managing emotional imbalances whether a gentleman or a lady they just feel i'm lonely and i don't like the loneliness and all of a sudden you now bring a lady into your life or bring a gentleman or bring personalities into your life who begin to pay the price for loneliness that the holy spirit and the revelation of scripture is what should bring are we together now it's amazing how people transfer their emotional excesses to partners this happens in marriage this happens in relationships they not aggression they transfer responsibilities that they should have for their lives they hate themselves they feel bad about themselves and there's nobody to blame because they are the only ones there then they now bring a woman into their life and use the template of their negative outlook on their self on the dear lady so the guy tells the lady look why are you not talking to me she says please i'm not in the mood a wise man should understand that this is how ladies act she's probably offended with something and needs him to gently just probe through and then the guy just turns and slaps her that slap would have happened since he's he has been angry with himself it's just that there was no scapegoat to vent it unfortunately the scapegoat now happens to be whether a lady is going out with or a wife and then he acts out on her and uses an obvious reason she shouted at me then you use a hammer to kill a fly because she shouted so you see that the, the real thing is not about the shout it's about a negative outlook is that true a sister can make a statement like may god prosper us all so you are trying to say i'm not rich Abby. i've been watching you know it's an outlook it's a disposition you have sustained for a long time and just because it's amazing it is wrong to transfer your imbalances to another person managers do it to their staff is that true pastors do it to members and there is always a supposed legitimate ground you can use that's why you must be god fearing it is the fear of the lord that will judge you you'll go back and say kai but truly truly mm -mm, this one i'm at fault our chains breaking tonight may they so break in jesus name love is not supposed to be or marriage or relationships it's not a way of transferring an assignment that the world should do to a partner to yoke that person with pain no number three wrong motives for relationships and marriage we're still on motives the perception that financial advantages will be derived from that relationship or that marriage now financial advantages should be part of the advantages derived but not the basis you don't come to somebody's house just to eat but at least a good family should offer you something if not anything water it's amazing and let me say this i know we are humans please don't get me wrong I'm, I'm very sympathetic to people's situations there are families who because of the reality of their financial predicament doesn't matter what factors cost it the truth is that on the strength of certain levels of financial predicament the personalities involved and that includes both ladies and guys mostly ladies but includes gentlemen too can be pushed is that true into relationships and even marriages that should not be in hope that by being connected to that individual you can derive 
financial advantages as the ultimate basis it's a terrible thing if my basis of relating with um come david Dam, if i'm relating with david Dam because i know that he has some money and i'm hoping that instead of begging all the time why don't i just become his wife are we together now it's a terrible thing and sometimes let's be very sincere our parents can push us even for men they now come and ask the man you are walking is the woman walking he said no she loves god she said no wait so that my own share she will now come in and block my own share is selfish is selfish listen let me tell you this brothers and sisters i say this from my heart parents are not supposed to wait for children to bless them it's an anomaly and if it does happen if it does children are mandated to honor their parents are we together now it's a scriptural obligation but no parent should sit down waiting for their children to succeed they sold their children in school like an investment they sold their children in relationships like an investment in hope that their graduation will or they are getting into whatever relationship will now bring back financial rewards is selfish it is not godly now it is largely a product of pressure but let truth be truth brothers and sisters it is selfish there are many homes today that would have been in peace if selfishness of this sort was avoided so there are men who are going around looking for ladies who are working working class ladies earning 250,000 who maybe age is not on their side and they are willing to volunteer themselves to exit the ladies out of singleness provided she will pay the rent provided she will do all and so his own contribution is to make her a missus is selfish there will be trouble in that relationship is god blessing us financial reward is a wrong basis for marriage it's a wrong basis for latching on to people now don't get me wrong i've taught you on favor favor is relational but it must not be the basis i have enjoyed favor knowing people i have been blessed extensively but it cannot be the basis many of you are very sad hearing what you are hearing because for some of you this has been the pivot is is a is a pillar of your love and marital philosophy it must crumble because god is rebuilding something that will last if you're with me say amen, amen. wrong motives don't be under pressure you say it is true age is not on your side but just running into marriage or run whoever comes it doesn't matter once let let the guy just say i'm a christian no it is selfish because children are going to come from that union don't forget if it's a business relationship you can quit any day but marriage no pay attention let me talk to every gentleman here remember that children will come from the product of your relationship you must not be so self-centered that you ignore certain things because of what you are looking for no you must be very sympathetic there are all kinds of children moving around with all versions of irresponsibility communicated and it was a derivative of selfishness most of us have been uncomfortable with our loved ones we have frowned and complained very vocally about the things they have done god is now giving us a chance to correct it otherwise we are going to do the same thing hallelujah relationship must be based on sincerity sincerity not some self-centered thing this is the reason why let me tell you how to know that a relationship is self-centered the ease with which the individuals live whether it's a love relationship whether it is a business relationship if i can let go a business partner i've known for two years easily it's a sign that there was no genuine commitment are we together i'm not an advocate of divorce but you see sometimes as a man of god part of your responsibility will have to be to manage individuals on this wise and i have seen the pain in couples when they are about parting sometimes they have to do because the law has come into it and you have to respect the law 
the constitution of your territory but you see them live in tears you just know that the differences were truly irreconcilable but still there was that pain but the relationships we have these days it enters with speed and lives with speed the guy just tells the lady i lost the contract she said eh, eh, which of them now said the big one no? and then the lady she doesn't leave at once she begins to angry call i'm busy sorry i'm this or the gentleman now comes and then the lady says well there's something i want to tell you i'm so sorry but i just want you to know that we have an idol in our family my my grandfather was actually a priest and there's a covenant that any man that comes around me something happens the brother said you mean it he said no problem Abba, he's in a koinonia and never picks the call again you see that now but the day he was talking to his friends about the lady say i love this lady. say are you sure he said, I do. but now because you are aware of something that and it's not like you are the one who will fight the warfare just to stand by while the fight is going on yet you cannot do it and you want to spend your life as you say with the lady no sir let's grow up some of these things we are doing is a lot of childishness this thing is serious business mm. is god helping us say in the name of jesus i redefine my motif for wanting friends for marriage and for the pursuit of god there are many christians who seek god for cars and houses you see the truth is that when you seek somebody for an ulterior motive the day you get it your goal has been achieved there is no impetus if i need children desperately and you find out that the system of getting children is a woman how many do you want for the day she gives birth to the fourth child you will subconsciously find out that she's a goal achieved that's the reason why you see many supposed romantic relationships end up in ashes after certain things have happened because the object of it was not genuine love it was in pursuit of certain things so the guy wants to exit singleness and he brings a lady the day he gets married he's shocked that one week later he's admiring his single days why because the goal has been achieved mama has been disturbing me Mario, oh yeah mama have married that's it and the wife says, so what do we do with ourselves now? We're married. Say, well, I go and ask my mother that first us to marry. <laughs> Motives. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents. So I come to God with fasting and prayer. Lord, I want to know you. I want your presence. And the word of God moves past my words and my singing and enters my heart and sees in that heart that Lord, I've, I've been despised. They've been looking at me as if I would not become anything. So Lord, anoint me and God says, you failed the test. Uh-uh. This is not the key to the anointing. But you may be singing and the word of God comes to your heart and discerns that Lord, I seek to see your kingdom come. I seek to see lives change. The word returns back to God with a report. Genuine and the anointing comes upon your life in dimensions and proportions you didn't even pray for this is the mystery behind receiving sometimes more than what you prayed for your motive was also praying while you were praying your motive was praying god give me money and then your motive was saying god use me to prove to people and god says no i'm hearing two of them your motive is canceling your prayer God bless me. Lord, I look at lives and I see an opportunity to represent Christ to them. Your motive has a voice and heaven can hear it. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. That's my testimony. Lord, you have my heart consumed my heart with your love sing it one more time lord you have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love
Here's the part I love. Hey, hey, hey. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. That's the name that is worth my adoration. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Listen, please sit down. Look at me, everybody. It is time for everyone in a relationship or married or ready for a relationship to be sincere with yourself tonight and probe your motive. Apostle, our family have suffered and they drove me. They said, I'm, I'm of a marriageable age. They said, I should go and bring a man that will help us. Your motive is sincere and I give you the credit for being sincere, but it is wrong. It is wrong. That's why God will bring a brother that will be a millionaire in five years. But because your motive is to get the future now, you will turn away your blessing and look for something else and five years later you will say i had a chance i had a chance to build with this brother but because my motive was hidden about now today how many people had the privilege to build great ministries with people they didn't have their motives were wrong and today they look at men of god on tv I used to know this man on campus. I used to, what did you do about it? You did not see, you didn't discern greatness. So you were looking for tomorrow today. Now that rejected stone has become such a cornerstone that you will have to join the queue today and watch in admiration. Be careful when you despise people. This is just by the way, but be careful. Brothers and sisters, do not despise anybody who is working with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a track record of producing signs and wonders. He said there is this treasure. Look at people like us. Look what he's done with our lives. Don't you ever look at somebody today just because he's wearing a torn shoe. I'm not saying it just for relationship. There are many of us, we have a mindset of disdain. Not relationship. One, you only honor people who seem to have a persona. When you see their car and you see finance, they are worthy of your respect. Be careful. Because that rejected stone, that rejected stone, brothers and sisters, when you see the son of man in power and glory now the brother is fasting the brother is praying the truth is that even if you visit him it's an embarrassing truth but he cannot afford gary and he has been sincere to tell you i'm not a thief god is helping me relationship is a risk whoever can take that risk deserves to sit on the throne don't you ever admire my throne when you did not appreciate adulam there is a relationship between Adulam and the throne. Is God speaking to us? Mm. If you were not there during my pain, don't expect to be invited. That's why I love people and I honor them. I see young pastors, most of them, thrown away by supposed fathers, thrown away by people. And some of them come and say, man of God, my life is scattered, but I love the Lord. I was wrongly mentored and so my 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 life and I tell them don't worry you can start again because you can throw the pen and say carry I'm not ready for headache do you know in this our world we love results but we hate laboring to make the result happen when you see a young man and a young woman fire brand you just incorporate sonship it's funny what we do come darling this is my daughter come David Dam. This is my son. What investment did you make in them? They came to your office five years ago. You threw them away. Now you heard that this guy is a voice all around. You heard that this lady has a dangerous prophetic grace. And you just incorporate people. No. No, sir. You have no... You are not a stakeholder over any life you did not believe in. Are we together? I knew you yesterday. That's nonsense. Did you believe? When I said God was going to help us, did you believe? When I said I had the call of God upon my life with a torn trouser, sister, did you believe in him? 
when the gentleman was fighting an incurable disease that you were aware of and you ran away did you believe our world is full of regrets because people lack discernment you would have looked at Saul and called him a failure until you find out who was writing the epistles all around you would have looked at Moses and called him a stammerer you would have looked at Peter and called him very emotionally boisterous be careful when you conclude on men everybody is a project under construction let God finish help those outside everybody is a project under construction making my 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 listen let me just add something quickly be careful when you talk about people especially aspects of their lives that are not favorable brothers and sisters Jesus had resurrected they were still talking about his death there are people you may see today yes the guy was a smoker when you knew him you've not known him for five years and this brother has received do you know I used to have a classmate years ago that guy I got to hear that he got into all kinds of funny things his father was a pastor and this brother got into I mean this just all this smoking these funny things I wondered where he got that thing from you looked at this guy his eyes were dark his mouth you know cracks all scattered life as if he never went to school I remember one day seeing the guy and he said he wanted to learn guitar he was crying I told him I said my friend the truth is that you're messing up your life but God can give you a chance and he said everybody has turned him down I said don't worry do you know four years ago I found out he was a pastor in Salem Chapel yes yes fiery pastor ah when he called me I said ah he was I said you mean it Salem Chapel Archbishop Sam Amaga Salem Chapel you've become a man of God now he said yes I was talking and then we were discussing I was so happy I mean two minutes went to five minutes and he blasted in tongues I said this guy is filled with the Holy Ghost I mean this is this is not tongues that started today no there is tongues this thing has graduation it has levels ah, this brother was was ratting this thing and I just looked at him I said that's right brothers and sisters imagine the person who advised that nobody should help him that person will bury his head in shame forever most of our parents are old there is no helper because they advise people not to help their helpers they said this boy will be useless forever this lady is a prostitute forever while they were talking the hand of God was following that prophetess while that was happening you are living your life anyhow see do you know something about the call of God the call of God is dangerous it will haunt you until it finds you you do what you are doing the call will remain I tell you this yes so you will see somebody in a beer parlor now that's a geo I tell you it takes discernment just I'm not endorsing all these things but while you are concluding that geo that's 30 churches you are seeing and the person the day God is ready to stamp his feet you are on your way going from home as drunk as you are fire falls from heaven God will put a burden in the heart of one old intercessor woman who will pray for two years not knowing the name of the person she's praying for that's you there prophecy is haunting you the first dream is as you take from stupor you see a crusade you get up and say no me me that I contributed in scattering the chairs of one crusade God says keep watching let me tell you one of the signs of what the Spirit of God is doing in this season is bringing people who are this rejected stone you see they are rising from families I'm saying this prophetically there are people they've concluded about you 
they've concluded everything about you but God God out of the ashes am I dying today I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified I see the breaking of a brand new day. Your family may not look like anything. But out of the ashes of that dying today. I see the breaking of a brand new day. In which the name of the Lord alone is Lord. See the breaking of the brand. Listen, sister, if you don't like the brother, just go. Don't tear him down. Just go. Brother, if you don't like the sister, just go. Don't tear them down. Because God is in the business of turning people's lives around. You will see a brother that graduated 10 years, moving like a fugitive in one week. Three jobs just come. Have you not seen how history has changed people's lives? We must repent from concluding on people. Not when they are. That's why you see, let me tell you something. This is how I am. One hand is the hand of iron. Another hand is a hand of love. This is true fatherhood. When you are teaching, you teach preventive. You challenge people. But the other hand must be there. Are you listening to me? When you see me stand on stage and I'm preaching, you see the fire and fiery because I'm trying to create a platform for people to walk right. But then there is another hand, brothers and sisters. If all your hands are iron, you will not be a good preacher. On one hand, you must challenge people. But on another hand, you must be ready to wipe the tears of people. One of my prayer as a person is to remain a shoulder that any and all kinds of people can come. Whether you are a drunkard, people can criticize. That's why you never come and find anybody saying something here and say, this lady, we know her. So what? What is your business? It is the house of God, not your house. Leave them. Oh, the brother comes today. Don't, just leave him. Focus on what God is doing. One day, just like someone, you see God touching people here. You don't know how long God has been following them. If God has not given up on people, don't, be, don't give up on people. Let me tell you, society is full of people with all kinds of pain. Don't come and add to it. You see people laugh in church, forget all that laughter. There are people, some entered prostitution because of pain and frustration. Others entered it because of the frustration of their fathers. Some ladies are pursuing men for money, not because they are bad. It's the pressure of the pain. So you teach on one side. But with another hand, you are there to show love. Is God teaching us something? You have to learn. Some of us are pastors. We are very quick to conclude on people. We are very quick to turn and say, that lady, this brother, let me tell you, you know it. Ask the workers. There is nobody. Nobody. There are people who have gotten pregnant in this ministry out of wedlock. I stood by them. Suspect me. It's your cup of tea. I love God and I love them too much to allow your legalism stop it. We don't stand close to our wounded people in the body of Christ. We are the first to point to them. We are the first to say this guy will never rise. We are the first to say this pastor came down. We are the first to say this, this brother cannot. Keep quiet. If the God in heaven says there is hope for a tree, then you better support him and say there is hope for a tree. I'm speaking to certain people here. There are some ladies who believe they will never get married. You ask them why they say, Apostle, if you know what I've done with my life, I bring you a word of hope. This God you see is a mighty God. You are amazing. You are amazing. You're so amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh, oh.
God is ministering to people. Motives. Number two, let me hurry up. Roles. There must be clarity of roles. Clarity of roles. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. A man has a role in a relationship. A man has a role in marriage. There is a divine order. A woman has a role. It says, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Whoever that man is, whether he's a pastor, whether he's an apostle, whether he's a prophet, whether he's a business CEO, there are roles. Most challenges in relationships, most challenges in marriage is because of one or the other party. When they refuse to perform the due diligence of their roles. I was counseling a pastor this morning before I came into Zaria. And we got into a very serious discussion. And he shared with me a few things that I felt were not supposed to be as far as his family was concerned and he seemed to justify it with a lot of spirituality he hoped i would be impressed at the end of it i told him carry a paper carry Byron." i told him i said go back to your wife and apologize to your wife he said he has a fasting program i said cancel it go to your wife apologize to your wife it so strong him but i said you honor me if you take my voice to be the voice of god in your life your heavens will remain closed there's no need praying for you go back swallow your pride humble yourself and say wife this is what i have done i have not played my role well and i told him the heavens will be open listen i told you in relationships there is no big manism you must be willing to be vulnerable are we hearing what i'm saying very important there are husbands who have not played their roles well there are wives who have not played their roles well. There are pastors and leaders who have not played their roles well. There are those in love relationships who have not played their roles well. There must be a definition. No system works when there is no clarity of roles. Nobody will come and sit down on the keyboard if it's not in the worship team. There are many people who can play keyboard. But there is an assigned role and even among all those who are playing keyboards they know those who are on duty is that true there is chaos and disorderliness every time there is vagueness of roles if the wife has money she buys food if the man has money he buys food there is no clarity when i'm not saying there cannot be assistance but let there be clarity who is the authorized personality for performing this if a man can cook and decides to go to the kitchen according to that marriage who is supposed to that kitchen is whose office if because of the nature of the job of the people the man says no I love you so my love constrains me are you getting what I'm saying now the payment of school fees if because the man has lost his job or has not gotten a job and the woman has an advantage and she says look my husband i will go out of the way to pay the school fees that is an assistance whose role scripturally provision is under whose office salvation is not under the office of the holy spirit it's under the office of the christ there is no other name given to man by which we must be saved you can't say holy spirit i believe in you and be born again he is part of the godhead but it is not his office when you pray you pray to the father jesus taught us answered prayers is in the office of the father even in heaven there are roles are we together now the 20 and 4 elders have their roles gabriel as an archangel has a role he doesn't show up and every time he's shown up it was a role in heaven where there is no devil in heaven there was an exact angel that brought messages our lives are disorderly because our businesses our churches our ministries 
Look at this. I, I always give this example. Watch this. If I throw this on the ground by mistake, whose role is it to come and help and pick and give it to me? If there is no, if there is no definition, Sam will try to run and come. Is that true? This lady will try to run and come and there will be chaos because all there was no definition of who plays which role. Is that true? There has to be an authorized system. If this mic goes off now, everybody will run to the technical stand if there is no definition of who does what. You see, when there are roles, reconciliation is easy because it's easy to identify who defaulted. But when there are no roles, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together now? You have to understand how these systems work. Thank you, guys. Are we together? You must understand it's very important you're a businessman train your staff nobody does just anything no sir the wife cannot be the husband in the house doing everything it doesn't matter whether she has more money than the man it's not about money it's a divine order you don't like what i'm teaching please listen and find true freedom who is responsible for the disciplining and the correcting of the children if the man carries a rag and mobs the house and sweeps the house and does everything if the couples agree that let there be this because of our uniqueness it is love but not that people do you know that most people come into relationships with our ideas of roles the lady has her idea of roles based on what you saw with her mother and her father or her elder sister the man and everybody keeps their own we're talking about expectations shortly and then there is chaos and anarchy she collects five hundred thousand as a seed and then the man stops giving her money for four months and she says you are joking in my world you are supposed to keep giving me money whether i collect one million because you are the man and the man says in my world whoever has money at the moment pays for the bills both of them are tongue talking they are spirit filled but that relationship cannot work are we together there is no definition of roles no relationship can thrive no marriage can thrive even your work with god you know the one that is for god give to caesar what belongs there are some things that are a man's role sisters listen there is an anointing on everything a man does as prescribed by god any man that cannot cater for his family that means in god's system he has created a provision that if any man abides by that provision with time he should sustain the ability to provide for his family is that true there is a role of the woman i don't want to go into all of the details i've preached them in other messages but we have gentlemen who are very irresponsible in many relationships and many families a man can cross his leg with three or four children and then they come with the report card daddy uh next week is school is it, am i working have you seen me go out to work go and meet your mother jerry is shameless it's supposed to be a taboo and then he meets the dear woman who covers his shame as proof that she submits to him and pays the school fees then the man is happy and goes to sit down with his colleagues playing draft and sitting in front of shops and all of this and they discuss themselves they say, i control my wife oh, i don't let her do any nonsense every money plus high is my own How about women that can have one million naira and watch their husband struggle 200,000? Say, me, I'm not a fool. I love him, but I'm not that foolish. Let him do it. If I do it, he will get used to it. Wise sayings, counsels of Ahitophel that spread from family to family, from mothers to children, from fathers to all kinds of things. And people destroy homes with all kinds of mindsets. Listen. A believer is not just one who has given his heart to Christ. A believer is one who has submitted to the word of God as final authority. Is God speaking to us? 
I know my role in this ministry. I have a role in Koinonia. The Lord has put me by grace and by privilege to head this ministry. I know my role and I play it well. I can do other things, but I choose to limit myself so that other people can find expression. The heads of department are here. They were constituted. If I trust them, then I step back and let them work. There is a system of supervision. I allow their creativity to find expression so that I can focus in the ministry of the word and prayer. There are many churches that will not grow because the man of God wants to do everything. You don't trust anybody. They finish collecting offering and you just stroll as if you are going to pray. And, and you just stroll in and say, why is that envelope on the ground? Put it back. What is your own job? Stay away. That's how many men are. They give their wives money and follow her to the market. Today I want to see. Okra can be this price. And they watch. And we, we make a fool of ourselves. Understand your role. If the person fails, there is a third party in that relationship. And God is more than just. As carnal as we are, God gives you the anointing and steps back. I can misuse the anointing. He will call me to order, but he can trust me with the anointing. If God can trust me with the anointing, who are you not to trust another person? There must be clarity of roles. Even in a relationship, there must be clarity of roles. Define it. Who does what? You are in a relationship. Come darling. And the guy doesn't pray. He doesn't care. When it's time to pray, say, please, you lead us. You know, you are the one who is a woman of God. That's a foolish man. Because according to the principle of priesthood, you can start carnal, but you shouldn't remain like that. You should so contend for growth that you should catch up fast. Also, you know us, we, are, we just love God generally. You are the ones who are really into this God thing. Just pray for us. It's a thing a man should be ashamed of. I don't condemn you for being where you are, but you have to sit up. Are we together? The order of priesthood in the home is first man. God watched man fall when he came. He didn't go to Eve. He said, that's not my organogram. Adam, come, 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 come. Adam gave him access to talk to Eve. Then he went to Eve. Even God could not talk to Eve directly. He had to come to Adam. So when Satan starts talking to your wife in your home, something about your priesthood is missing. Why will a strange woman enter your house and start manipulating your wife? Where did you keep your discernment? Where were the dreams? No prophecy? No dream? No feeling anything? Come on now. Is God speaking to us? There must be clarity of roles. In this ministry, I know my role. I can't allow anybody's prayer life as much as I know to be greater than my prayer life in this ministry. I'm finished. What else am I doing? It's not just holding the mic. Geo and, and, and all these funny things. It's not just about water and all of this. There is a spiritual... When things go wrong in people's lives in the ministry, ask those who know me. I go back with pains and I say, God, what happened that you didn't show me? I remember one of our heads of department that died, I don't know how many years ago. Asked the protocol. Immediately they told me that thing. When I finished, I went on a retreat immediately. For three days, nobody saw me. I was asking God questions. What happened to my eyes? What happened to my ears? That is a great father. That you enter your home and see your children crying. I say, well, in Nigeria, I'm not worried. No, you are an irresponsible man. A good man will stand there in the presence of the children. And with tears coming, he will go and lock himself. And say, that's it. Which, who in my circle is financially free? I'm going to break my pride and go back. I can't watch this. I, it's amazing how children go to fathers. Daddy, I want school fees. I don't have. What should I do? That's irresponsible. That is sin. It's the same thing like drinking blood and eating flesh because you are destroying someone's destiny. 
please don't get married when you are not ready to play your role being a man is not about having a masculine figure it's not six pack it's responsibility it's responsibility it's responsibility are we together that's why we finish koinonia i stand every friday for at least five hours when I stand here around 7, 7.30, I don't leave this place sometimes till 12 or 1 in the night. Responsibility. I return by 4.30 from a trip. I've been away. I've not even eaten anything, truthfully speaking. I'm here standing by 5.30, we're off again to Lagos. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. I owe a responsibility to teach you the truth under God. You have honored me. It will be wicked. Immediately I arrived, I carried my laptop and my notebook first just to dust on the topics. Abba, provider, protector. Abba, provider. Don't bring any woman into your life that you don't have. It starts from relationship. This irresponsibility has traces. You can see it. As a man, don't keep quiet in a relationship every time there is a cost dimension. Even if you don't provide it, be sympathetic to it. Are we together? You want to pay school fees and your wife pays. Don't say, oh, well, thank you. No, my wife, thank you so much. You have helped me do this. I'm proud of you. I truly appreciate. Me? Tell my wife this? No way. I won't do anything. Then you continue. How many women leave their roles to house helps? Who win the hearts of their husband? And they keep binding and casting because they are out gossiping with people who talking about people. Um, um, what's her name? Please make sure you know my husband doesn't like too much. But just do this. If you are busy, it's justifiable. But most of them is out of laziness. And then the lady is preparing, and the man is watching a virtuous lady. She comes to serve him, and the devil starts suggesting, saying, "What was really your plan for a wife?" And at the end of it, when those women come for counseling, they won't tell you the whole story. They will cut the part that makes the man evil. Are we together? You must be willing to play your role. You must be. I can't come to a house and see children running up and down, mucus on their nose, their clothes with oil, and the wife is just crossing her legs. No, ma, you are failing in your role. Just because the man helped to dress the children is not his role. The design of a woman is a reflection of her role. Visitors cannot come and sit down and then the wife is just sitting and then the man goes to the fridge. He's trying to quickly prepare something. I said, find my husband, that's how he is. No, that's not how he is. That's how you made him. God made him to occupy a position of honor. Is God speaking to us? I must pray for you it's a responsibility I must attend to you as much as possible it's a responsibility I must sow into your life not waiting for you to carry money and come and give me no sir brother is that what you are doing in your relationship is that what you are doing in your marriage sister is that what you are doing let's correct these things tonight if you are not yet in a relationship, thank God. If you are not yet married, thank God. Because now you are learning. You are learning. How many women are carrying the book? You see a child sick. Children sick. Three children sick. And you see the woman holding a hot air umbrella in the afternoon. Backing one and holding two with the umbrella. Just singing praise and worship. And going. And then the husband is somewhere. And you will find that man in a pepper soup joint somewhere you see that or donating money to one man of god it doesn't matter even if it's me it's a sin you take care of your family first don't carry any money and come and give any man of god and leave your family dying god does not act like that are we together and you are wondering where is this woman's husband child is coughing the other one is purging the baby is crying you see her tapping the baby standing in the hot sun and sometimes the husband can pass with a car and just wait back. later 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 
No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Your father advised you that that's what he did to your mother to respect him. But that's not the word of God. We've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Is God speaking to us? Don't expect to change if you are not taught. It is the entrance of the word that gives light. Otherwise, your default mindset, even if you hated it, is what you will see playing out. I watch the way brothers treat ladies. And I know they are on their way to being bad gentlemen. Now, I know that ladies have their issues here and there. But let me tell you, it is still not enough reason. Please, marriage is not by force. It's not the condition for heaven. If you must marry, be willing to play a role. It is true that the woman should respect you regardless of results. But results is like a lubricant to honor and submission. It is difficult for a woman to struggle to submit to a man who has proven himself to be worthy of honor. He said, let them that rule well be counted for double honor. Is God speaking to us? I'm going to stop here in that area. We are still going to talk on expectations very quickly. But listen, if you are in a relationship or you are looking at a lady prayerfully or you are looking at a guy prayerfully, it doesn't matter what category or you are married, go back home tonight and ask yourself if you want to get into business partnerships what is your role do you understand i'm coming into this business as what please if you are a ceo here or you have a business you are leading a business go back and find out all the people involved in that business what is their role let there be clarity if there is one boy running around your house one girl running around your house let them know are they protégés or are they sons and daughters maybe spiritually or by reason of commitment don't leave vagueness in your house who enters your room and who doesn't who should enter your bedroom and who shouldn't who should open your wardrobe and who shouldn't if you don't define it one day something will happen that will surprise you you see homes there are times a man and his wife can sit down they are discussing very private issues and the next thing their mother or mother-in-law somebody just bangs the door and then oh you who are discussing bar sorry uh, there's no no it's the fault of the man create a system of order anybody that comes under my roof should know their boundaries and their limitations are we together yes Nobody should come to your house with your wife there and just enter your kitchen and start cooking. No, sir. If your wife authorizes her or on grounds of friendship, that's fine. People cannot veto into your life like that. A man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. Put walls. There are walls in heaven. There's no enemy there. Yet there are gates to regulate and bring order. Twelve gates. hallelujah i live a peaceful life as a man of god because there is clarity i don't have to come here in the daytime to check have they put the chairs no the people have been trained to keep their roles here and there people forget their roles or don't meet up to expectations then you can lovingly call people to order you don't blame everybody for one person's mistake when there is clarity of roles if there is no food in the house you know who to blame transfer of aggression is proof of lack of wisdom there has to be somebody if it is systemic you can pinpoint who should do this you don't blame your wife for something children should do children are running around there and you finish eating and your wife does not carry the plate and you have a young lady 13 years she catwalks and pass you there you call her back and say no pick that plate you are going to become someone's wife yeah, daddy I don't like this this is the kind of thing I, that's how I watch in that film tell her keep quiet keep quiet fast this is my house I love you I've been responsible I don't mean to abuse you but it is not under my watch if I train you and you get to the age of discretion and you mismanage your life I can stand before God and men and say that is my daughter I train her her life is not a reflection of my convictions you remain my daughter but you you reap the consequence of your actions but not when you are under your watch don't let anything under your watch in business and in life go out without definition 
expectations. Number three. Let's talk about this and we pray. Is God helping us tonight? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 3 and verse 3 to 5. Quickly. Every relationship has expectations. Marriage, business, career, church, mentor, mentee, father, son, daughter, husband, wife, whatever kind. Every relationship has expectations. Acts chapter 3, please. The Bible speaking about the man at gate beautiful he kept seeing peter and john the bible says that he saw them every time and then one time when he saw them they looked like they were rich they created an impression that cultivated expectation and then the bible says who seeing peter and john were they the only two that went to the temple no there was something he had been observing in them. That was his place of stay. And the Bible says he asked them for arms. Verse 4. And Peter fastening his eyes implicated himself by saying, look on us. If he kept quiet, that man would say, talk, you are passing. The rest, he kept begging and the rest just did like this. But Peter stopped. Are we together now? Yes. Many people don't want children, but you stopped. You said, I want. You are implicating yourself. Many people don't want marriage. You stopped. You looked at a lady and said, I want to spend my life with you. Every time you make a proposal and a commitment, you are creating expectation. It says, look on us. Verse 5, the last verse now. It says, and he gave heed to them, expecting to do what? Please talk to me. Expecting to. Your wife expecting something from you. Your husband expecting from you. God expecting from you. You expecting from God. Everything relational has expectations. Frustration in relationships are products of disappointed expectations. Now, many people are not vocal enough about their expectations. For most couples, it is hidden. They are not vocal to state it out, which in my opinion is very dangerous. There must be clarity of not only motives, roles, but expectations. Expectations of behavior. Hello, look up please. Expectations of contribution. If you get a job with a bank, they tell you what to expect and then they tell you what they are expecting from you. Is that true? Yes. You can see the way the worship team is dressed. Wonderful, lovely people. By subscribing to this department, there are expectations. You have expectations, but then there are also expectations. There are demands. And it must be clear. Imagine if they didn't plan what to wear. There are times that I believe you can freestyle. Everybody just wears whatever. At that time, you don't blame anybody for wearing what. We can't all agree to wear suit. And then you just come in with your jeans and say, look, there's liberty in the house of God. No. There's expectations. There are, there are times in the bank where they say today we are wearing the vests. If you are in that bank and you are walking, you, it's not whether you like it or not. It's the sacrifice for relationships. Please, I want you to note this. All relationships should have clearly defined expectations. Especially love relationships. Expectations of behavior and expectations of contribution. What do I expect you to bring to the table as my wife? What do I expect you to bring to the table as my husband? I just entered a relationship with you. Congratulations. What do I expect you to bring? What is the expectation of behavior from me to you? What is expectation of behavior from you to me? Listen, don't say it does not matter. There is expectation of behavior. When a woman gets married, her husband expects certain behaviors. The man too should, there, there is a way you must behave. There is a way you talk. There is a way you reason. When God makes you a leader and anoints you, there is expectation. Expectation. When trouble happens 
in let's say a company you see maybe a, a staff and a customer are fighting they are all fighting when a manager or a director comes out he doesn't act like the person who just got a job don't insult me or just because we live on the same street i will remove this suit and beat the living daylight out of you and while he's talking a director comes out his attention is called he has been trained to create an expected behavior that reflects the values of the bank and he comes out and says, okay calm down what's wrong and he said, your staff, he, every time I talk to him, he counts money. And there's, you people are all cheats in this bank. He says, all right, we apologize. And he's paining the staff. The staff is saying, this guy. He says, no, it's all right. Just go up and wait for me. He doesn't even rebuke him. And then he tells the man, I'm sorry. For doing this, we're giving you 2,000 naira extra. And God said, tell that your foolish man that I'm a valued staff. And walks out. You will think the director was cheap for doing that. It's called expected behavior. He now goes out and shuts the door and then blasts the hell out of his staff. And then when he finishes, they come out as if they were drinking tea together because there is expected behavior. Does your home have an expected behavior? That's why men don't know who to beat in public or secret. No expectation. They just beat the wife, quarrel the wife. There are things your wife does not expect from you. There are things she expects from you. If you do not fulfill the expectations, the parties will be frustrated. Are we together? A woman cannot marry and still want her single life again. Something, you, you must have given up something. A man cannot marry and still want his single life again. You, are, you used to stay out late, 10.30 in the night for no reason. Now you are married and you say, please, that's how my life is. There is expectation of behavior. Hallelujah. You won't come and see me stand here. I'm not saying it's bad. You won't come and see me stand here flying chains and wearing all kinds of rings in my hand. They may not be wrong in themselves, but leadership demands expectation of behavior. Are we together? I can't come and stand here with clothes, not iron. As simple as that. If I were not in my position, it would not matter. But the position demands an expectation. Is God speaking to us? Every business, every career, and every love relationship must have a system of providing clarity of expectation. Now, let me say something very quickly. Look up, please. I wrote something down here. Never try, this is particularly for love relationships, never try to change a spouse's personality there is a difference between personality and mindsets the only thing that can change is mindset personalities do not change easily most marriages and relationships are, are a circle of frustration because the man brings any lady and wants to force and mold that lady to reflect his idea and there are certain things that are ideological in nature but there are certain things that are personalities you will be blessed listen carefully a personality write this down the word personality means the psychological classification of different types of individuals please learn this personality talks of the psychological classification of different kinds of people personality talks about an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity an individual's make up an individual's inherent identity not mindset personality is not mindset an example of personality types now we're not doing all the standard the psychometry and all of this but i just want to give you an idea look up please because this is an area of great healing for many of us listen we have people who are quiet and reserved it's a personality we have people who are logical and inquisitive it's a personality we have people who are vocal and idealistic they are very outspoken we have people who are adaptable and agreeable 
they can marry anybody it doesn't matter if they marry pastors they can be a pastor's wife they marry a farmer they can be a farmer's wife they can adjust and adopt there are men like that you make them ceos they will do well you make them you tell them to learn guitar they can they are adaptable and agreeable there are people who that's see let me tell you this most relationship experts most of them were fortunate to come into lives with people whose personalities resonate and then they take for granted the ease with which their marriage is working and keep writing all kinds of books and making it look like if you are not getting that ease something is wrong it's a lie I don't have experience to speak over marriage but I can tell you from the word of God and from people whose lives have been models that any marriage is hard work is that true so a way with there are people who are fortunate they were able to resonate with individuals whose personalities are in tandem so whether or not with minimal effort there is compatibility so they they carry their relationship and their marriage as a template and write books about it and mentor people marriage is like the signs on the palm of someone's hand you can only be guided but you are the one who walks your marriage out with fear and trembling is god speaking to us There are people who are people-oriented and fun-loving. You will mistake them for being less as fair, but they are not. Even when they say someone has died, they can say, eh, eh, and in two minutes they are laughing at something else. And you are saying, I, I expect you to be crying. You say, well, I used to have a friend like that. Very interesting friend. Even when he was sick, he said he had malaria and he was still laughing on a call. I said, this, this guy, will you ever frown? now you will see those people and be deceived that they are always joyful no don't let their personality betray you you will be with them for 10 years laughing every day and they will tell you i've never been happy in this marriage from day one you say i can't believe this you look at the portrait in the parlor that's you laughing he said no it's my personality i have never really been happy there are people who are strong-willed and authoritative men and women alike strong willed you have to give them a thousand reasons to bend to the slightest adjustment ah may that be not be your wife oh may that not be your wife <laughs> strong willed and authoritative there are people who are argumentative and controversial you ask them what is one plus one I say it depends on the base base what <laughs> a simple answer that you can give they, they like it they like being controversial are we together yes you ask a very simple question they escalate little things i saw the way you smiled at that guy and you know in psychology there's something called eye contact they, they create stories out of nothing i'm sorry i did this to you why did you leave it till now? I mean, there, 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 has, no, no, there has to be a logic in this. I mean, you had a chance to say it in the morning, in the afternoon. You are saying it by night. It's a sign of argumentative. Now, they may not be bad. It's a personality. Most people are not guided. It's when they get married, they find out through experience that this is who and what I've married. Are we together what is a mindset a mindset is a viewpoint a perspective an established set of attitude it's usually a product of orientation I wrote here that is created by information the difference between a personality and a mindset is that a personality is inherent it doesn't mean it cannot be adjusted it can be adjusted by the power of the Holy Spirit but it is inherent a mindset is a philosophy you got as a result of an orientation that an information gave you now let me tell you this no matter how um please come come two of you let's assume that doctor is very quiet are we together let's assume that he's a very quiet person let's assume that david dam is very very um very vocal now two of them are filled with the holy spirit and all of that but the truth of the matter is that the wife comes and says me i like quiet men 
then you came to this guy you are going to frustrate him by saying don't talk the personality will keep betraying you again and again okay keep quiet and he keeps quiet after five minutes sorry that, that thing i want to keep quiet now and then at the end he said you are frustrating me this is what happens in many marriages the couples are on a mission to change supposedly you can't change any man you can only change mindsets and trust the holy spirit create a system of understanding to manage personalities otherwise don't go there fortunate for you if you can discern before but if you didn't then you must create a system of accommodation there are women who are mouthy it's not it's not um it can be used wrongly but it doesn't mean they are bad they are just very vocal they say a woman talks four thousand words in a day while a man talks one thousand five so if a noisy woman talks 500 in a day that balance is coming one day prepare for it because it should be 4,000 <laughs> it's like a check that will soon cash are we together you already know that your wife for instance is not somebody who is very quiet and you have a business meeting find a diplomatic way of making her excuse the meeting because sharp personality is going to disrupt the meeting and you will hate your wife the bible says dwell with them according to knowledge same thing in relationships there are men who like fighting for rights a bike man throws you and then the person you are going out with just comes and say are you joking i have my friend who is a lawyer let's carry this i said no 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 let it be no way me i can't i can't except i'm not the one in this relationship you think it's a joke Three days later, you see one lawyer guy with a paper looking for a bike man. Say, you threw my woman. You are somebody who is generally agreeable. I don't like trouble. So don't tell the man the story of the bike man. Are you seeing that now? Since you forgive, let it be. There are all these advocates, fighters of justice. That's a Mandela kind of personality. If, listen, listen, learn this, we are going to pray. Are we together when you discern the personality then you create a system around it you can change mindsets not personalities don't go there if the personality by default does not resonate with what you can take unfortunately most people are not mentored to this degree so they make a lot of costly mistakes you're a quiet person and then a woman is noisy and you see her and say is it that you you are not hearing what apostle is saying and she says i'm sorry sir and while you are trying to talk she says sorry let me is this, is this what i'm saying <laughs> my brother it is not a cause from anybody's father's house this is personality learn learn don't get angry at, and then let me tell you what the devil will do the devil will position a house help or someone that is quiet just like you want and he said can't look at look at this I've been talking to this lady for 10 minutes. She's been silent. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And you make the wife hate the house help and say, you are leaving next month in this house. Whereas that's the only source of helping her education. The man did not understand. And the man has dishonored his wife before the house help. You are comparing. I'm not saying the house help is bad, but you are the wife. But you are now comparing the wife with the house help. The small girl will go back and say, wow. So this is how this man esteems me. I can't believe it. The next time she's passing, she will make up. You will be shocked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She will make up. Not just because of going out like that. She's, ah, I used to think this is just, I mean, I can't believe that this man has this level of discernment over me. And trouble comes to your home. Don't try to change anybody. No man can change anybody's personality. The more the word of God begins to act on you and cultivate the fruit of the spirit, you see that the fruit of the spirit will begin to adjust your personality. But it will not take everything away. A talkative will be a talkative. A quiet person will be a quiet person. There are many quiet people we think it's the Holy Ghost that made them so. No, it's their personality. So they make you feel guilty for talking so much. They make you look like if you are really a spiritual person, you should be quiet. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a big lie. There are others who are vocal and mouthy and jumping around. Maybe preach yourself. They can jump around and make it look like if you are not agile like that, you, mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not the Holy Spirit. 
let's separate between the one our personality brought in and the one that came just because you are anointed elijah was a temperous person short tempered he would have easily worked on it but he didn't choose to work on it god still used him so while you are mentoring you are looking at his life for mentorship make sure you take away the personality so that you don't take the personality as part of what the holy spirit produces in men there are people who are not honest i can be angry with david Dam now and insult him and say it's the zeal of the lord no sir it's not the zeal of the lord i have a personality problem i must be unashamed to make this know that this is not mm -mm, this is not the holy spirit it is true that the holy spirit convicted me but this uh -uh, that insult part was not the holy spirit are we together you can change mindsets but you almost may not be able to change personalities no don't try to change your spouse's personality to reflect yours create a system of understanding create a system of understanding i've taught again and many of us know from psychology that women respond to life emotionally and men respond to life logically we know that you cannot make a woman become another man because of this. Let me tell you, uh, you've heard me share it. I can miss David Dam for one year, and the day we see, this is what happens. David, hi. And we're like, ah, I missed you, I so missed you. And it's over. That's it. All right, uh, we'll see. This is one year missing. That's a man for you. I just hugged him and remember that there's something I need to go and do quickly. A lady will leave her friend in the morning, and just because the friend didn't call by two, by four, she's saying, Habba, I notice you are getting heartless these days. Just because of six hours gap. Not to talk of a man that now traveled for three days and came back. And you see her being childish and playing all around you. And you say, what, what did I marry? I'm a, I'm a serious man. Everybody knows I'm visionary. What is this jumping up and down for? That's a lady for you. I tell you, the ladies are so blessed that I understand this and I'm letting you know. Yes, they are. Are we together now listen the lady can come and meet the brother we're rounding up sir the landlord came home and then the man keeps quiet you didn't hear what i said <laughs> then the man keeps quiet because you see when men are under pressure silence is the way they speak silence does not mean they are ignoring you silence means they are processing if you don't understand this about men you will destroy yourself i said what is all this thing with this man what is all this thing? You know, blah, 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 blah. When women are under pressure, they can talk. You've heard me say it again and again. The woman will talk about the issue of oil on a chair. That it is not oil anything. She has been finding a way of engaging her husband. And the guy has been, she's angry about plenty things. And it so happened that he now poured palm oil on a chair. I'm the one who walks in this house. I walk every day. Blah, 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 blah. And the man says, all for oil? Abasa. You are smart enough to know that this is not oil. The message is very clear. I am emotionally bankrupt. Find a way of fulfilling it. Fulfill that emotion and see how oil matter fades like a leaf. Say, how about the oil today? Which oil? Abba? Which oil? Are we together? So we have a visionary man and a wonderful, jovial, playful woman in the same house and they just can't connect. The man is sitting, Bible study or business meeting. There's a contract coming, 100 million. Honey, do you know what is happening? 100 million is coming. I said, see, I I'm telling you, if you see the cold drink I'm making for you, and I say, I'm talking to you about something we will eat and you are, mm -mm. and do you know what the woman says? She looks at him and says i've been married to you for 10 years you have never appreciated me i says me i've never appreciated you what of the bad days what of dubai what she's trying to say is this is what i feel at this moment and so i just have a way of saying it and uh, i thought if i say from the beginning it will bring the kind of impact that will force a response period but the man will take it literally with his philosophical first class brain and now go and say my wife call his friend i said my friend he said you too that's exactly what is happening my own home <laughs> we 
are going to pray. There are times ladies talk to you. The goal is not to answer. They are not talking to you. They are relieving themselves. Be wise and listen. Doesn't matter what they say. They will ramble from pillar to post. Just, just be agreeable if you want peace to reign. Be agreeable. At the end of it, when they start crying, you can come in. Because you know that that's it. They've got you to the breaking point. Okay, come in. But you stop her in the middle of that conversation. My brother, you will hear it. Prophetess, preacher, you will. Because that's, it's like a radar looking for who to end. Just stand behind quietly. It's not weakness. It's wisdom. Through wisdom is a house built. 24 verse 3 of, of Proverbs. Through wisdom. Amplified says a home, a house, whatever it is, is built. And then, let me round up. You talk to the man about the rent and he keeps quiet. And he said, I've noticed every time I talk to my husband, he just ignores me. What is this? I'm talking to him because I'm under pressure. You spoke to him on Sunday. On Wednesday, you just see him sit down and say, um, the house issue you spoke about. I'm not interested in anything. You didn't speak that time. No, that's how men talk. While he's sitting down, he has planned three or four people that he can call. He has made some calls without you knowing. You want to hear him making the call. The pride of a man does not allow that. He wants to show you he's responsible. Say, call in my presence. Let me know you are doing something. No, a man doesn't act like that. He will sit down. Because you are there, he will use an email instead. He will not use a call. So you will think he's not doing anything. Hey, Jimmy, please help me. Can I get 10 naira from you? Hey, Jimmy replies, yes, thank you. The alert has entered the account, you didn't even know. Just because he's sitting down quietly. Husband, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been keeping quiet. I'm not like, just because I'm not like other women. No, 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 and the man just keeps quiet. And one day, you go to test his blood pressure. And you see that it's everything over everything caused by you. And you come back and one day the man just looks at you. And in one word, he says, I'm going to divorce you. I can't take it. And he says, what have I done? And the man will say, I've been in this pain for 16 years. You don't understand me. But this is how he will say it. You don't respect me. You don't understand how we think. This is how men are. When they met Jesus, we caught a woman in adultery. Jesus just kept quiet. That's a man for you. Are you not going to talk? When he was before Pontius Pilate, in pain. When men are in pain, they keep quiet. When women are in pain, they talk till they cry. Men are not like that. Even when they cry, it's just the tear that speaks. My wife, I am in pain. Being a man is not one day so. And the woman is talking and then she said oh, since you will not do anything i will go and call this and he said don't do that don't do that oh yeah talk now just go go and sleep then in the middle of the night the man wakes up and goes to sit down outside did i offend you no you didn't offend him he's processing learn how men think he will sit down under a tree and say lord jesus you gave me a wife and children shame has come upon me like a shadow Will you not help me? I must come and sit with you. The Bible says, what God has joined. Leave the man. He's talking to God. He's talking to God. What is all what God has joined again? He's talking to God. Do, do, do. Okay,
want you to hold the hand of someone by your left and right, wherever you are. Let me tell you this. I know you laughed over everything that I was teaching. But there might be people following online who are saying, Apostle, you just read my marriage. You just read my relationship like a script. Are you sure somebody did not tell you about me? This pain society is full of pain ratio of divorce one is to two there's got to be something wrong the inability to understand the systems of god by the spirit of wisdom is what has brought this pain believers cannot enter decent relationships that they can be proud of that will lead in marriage Christian marriages now break and some don't divorce but the truth is they are divorced the truth is they are divorced intimacy zero communication zero partnership zero support of purpose zero that's why people get married and run back to their ex this ex that because they compare we celebrated valentine there are people here who just entered relationships others have been in it for a while others are married others are planning to get married others are veterans in this it doesn't matter where you are holding someone's hand because christian relationships are in trouble this thing there is a siege from darkness to attack marriages there is a siege from darkness to attack relationships there are many wonderful ladies that God wants them to settle there are many wonderful brothers but there is an understanding from the pit of hell and this discussion is an attempt by the spirit how many people have been stigmatized in the house of God because of their weaknesses and limitations how many women right now live unfulfilled lives in marriages listen by the privilege of the grace God has given me I counsel people I counsel people old enough to be my parents. I counsel couples. I counsel people when they are getting married. And sometimes I have to rest my head and say, my God. The person you are holding his hands right now may be in pains that you may never imagine. We come from families. I know that we all dress well tonight. But in one minute, I'd like you to whisper a genuine prayer over the person you are holding. And say, Lord, let the grace, let there be healing. Let there be healing. Healing. There are women who, if they have their way, they will say, I made a mistake in marriage. Lord, healing. There are men who are looking to say, if only someone advised me, I would not marry this woman. I can't believe I'm going to live with her for the next 40 years. There are relationships right now. A man entering five relationships thinking every lady is bad God is showing you that the problem might be you or a lady having a problem with every guy there are good relationships about to miss themselves because they do not understand the systems of God God has revealed a sister to you but just because you do not understand this you are about to lose a godly lady you are about to lose a godly brother because you've not been taught the way systems work. Please pray. Pray. This is a serious business. You grew up seeing your father humiliate your mother just because she was patient for 30 years, 40 years, does not mean that's how it should be. You grew up seeing your mother pay the bills. That's not the way it should be. Pray. Make your ma, 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 make your ma. Keep praying. Me mulki, me iko. Babu, Babu, Wani Kamar the Hallelujah. 
prayer point number two i'd like you to pray for your family if you are married pray please let me encourage except your wife is sitting far if you are married hold the hands and pray for your family the devil is out to destroy he's tarnishing the image of the church through their family lives there are men that are irresponsible we must square up there are women that are not respecting men we have been trained to be celebrated all over and we bring our husband as a fan we think he's part of the fans that admire our beauty you enter a relationship and still want the man to join a queue among the men liking you is a joke when the man talks he said don't treat me like this there are 10 other guys who love me who taught you that when you sign up for a relationship is a declaration of vulnerability you are ready to soil your hands to make it work beautiful girl handsome guy i'm a celebrity ladies like me all that is nonsense and um, uh, there are 10 guys calling me every day that is nonsense a relationship is a call for surrender of everything some of our fathers right now are almost giving our mothers heart attack as i'm talking some of you know it's true if your mothers were to hear me preach they would say sir this is what i wanted to tell my daughter before she goes to marriage the fact that many marriages are not divorced does not mean they are enjoyed the high rate of unfaithfulness can be traceable to the frustrations that people face please make contact with someone and let's cry for our families cry there is hope for a tree cry for your relationship lord forgive me where i've missed it as a result of ignorance i always thought the problem was the brother i thought the problem was my husband i didn't know love is a choice i didn't know it's a declaration of value i have devalued my husband before men i have devalued the gentleman you have brought to my life i've devalued this lady I've made everybody disrespect my wife disrespect this lady pray I've allowed my wife to foot the bill and play my role I've allowed my husband to be playing the role of a wife and I've thought that is a sign that I'm an expensive lady not knowing that I'm destroying my home I have gossiped about everyone and everything about my home about my husband I've stripped the dignity in my relationship. I ask for mercy. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, help my father. Lord, help my mother. Let him understand this. Let my father be able to enjoy a good wife. Let my mother be able to enjoy a good husband. Koinonia, pray. Our time is gone. But let's pray. Mandela Kapros Kadaba Lakuria Tabash Zekate Paroka to Sabrina Maladaba Lakatosh. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Two more prayer points very quickly. I want everyone to pray. Lord, grace to understand and play my role unashamedly in my relationship. Lift your voice and pray. Whether you are in a relationship or not, that's not the issue. Grace to be a provider indeed. Grace. To protect the fragile personality of the dear woman you have brought to my life pray grace to honor my man grace grace to honor the father of my children not once not twice grace to be vocal about honor pray I receive grace I will never allow my wife to go out looking for money while I'm sitting down there doing nothing I will never never allow my wife to replace me as provider if she's blessed and she contributes glory be to God I will never allow my husband be the one doing what I can do I break my pride I humble myself pray I break my pride I keep my ego aside hallelujah hallelujah you are in a relationship here and you have 
taking for granted any man's daughter you owe an apology you are in a relationship here and you've made nonsense of the man god has brought to your life because of all these funny men that come around like sheep they don't know you they've not lived with you so their verdict based on the flashy you they see is that you are award-winning but the person who knows you has ate with you has cried with you the same way the guys the lady doesn't know you she's not stayed with you in the room so it's easy for her to see the guy who is a millionaire she's not seen you under pressure but the person that has seen everything about you and yet loves you you can kick her like a piece of rag let's be careful grace the last prayer point i want us to challenge the power some of us come from families let's be honest tonight some of us come from families where there are strong altars we are not bad but the altars in our families have wrecked every marriage you know of including a pastor we are going to pray let's take one minute and wait war in the spirit don't keep quiet lift your voice and pray you have noticed that any man that comes into your life everything about him is destroyed it's not supposed to be very challenging discussions tonight lord let this word not just come and be received without bringing transformation lord i know that with this word tonight you have answered many questions you have brought direction for others you have given a green light for others you have given a red light for others you have given a basis for discussion for others you have given prayer points lord i pray that you help us all in the name of jesus we want to produce award-winning relationships in koinonia we want to produce award-winning homes lord i pray for my fellow brothers help them to be established i pray for our dear sisters in the name of jesus may they become virtuous women whose price is above rubies every cultural barrier we've held onto that is responsible for destroying our relationships and our personhood i challenge it in the name of jesus i declare freedom for you i declare liberty any relationship that does not reflect this that we have taught i supply grace for you to get out of it in the name of jesus and any relationship that is reflective of this that i've spoken about no matter what challenges are there i supply grace for you to stay and finish through in the name of jesus christ i bless every home represented for all those following online several parts of this nation and around the world i bless you and i bless your home in the name of jesus two things very quickly tonight i want us to make an altar call but we're going to make two altar calls quickly the first altar call is for those who are coming to hand their lives over to jesus the second altar call please keep standing you will sit down shortly i know you've been standing the second altar call is for those who are rededicating their lives listen and those who are standing in to say lord i'm standing not everybody please i'm standing in on behalf of my family there are marriages have not worked at all in my family but i want to be a pioneer i want to bring forth something that reflects you those three categories of people wherever you are make your way to the front quickly please quickly quickly we have one minute clap for them please everyone god bless you quickly god bless you nothing to be ashamed about god bless you quickly everyone keep clapping god bless you keep coming don't be ashamed some of you are standing on behalf of your family you are getting born again come come join them quickly but there are people who are saying apostle i've not seen a single marriage in my lineage that has worked ends up in divorce ends up in all kinds of devilish things lord have mercy make your way to the front you are not coming out as a sign of weakness some of you are not even representing yourself let me tell you the truth if you are not prayed for you will see the same result reproduced lord i don't know why every man that comes into my life i destroy them 
I don't know why every woman that comes into my life, I destroy them. Same thing with my elder brother. Same thing with my elder sister. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. Now, all those who are coming out for salvation prayer, you pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I want you to keep doing I love something you. for this man of God. And I believe in God, you. Apostle Joshua Salman, that you are the that son is, of God. I want you to keep on praying for I him. I ask you that the cause of the gospel to come into my may have free flow in him. Be my that Lord he and Savior. Be granted boldness from today, to continue with the commission of Jesus Christ. Christ. And that all provisions in the name be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't life forget is my spirit. to like this in video, don't forget now, all to of you who are the subscribe to button for families if you are new here. here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment here. section and then Please keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and, and let's all keep sharing Jesus. And See you things. again. There has to be somebody to end it. Say in Jesus' name. Say it convincingly in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare that I have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every covenant of witchcraft that is destroying homes and relationships in my family i stand here tonight and i make a new covenant on behalf of myself and my loved ones and i declare that in the name of Jesus marriages begin to work I declare that marriages begin to work in the name of Jesus say I declare that marriages begin to work Satan powers holding my family maritally I declare let me go now let my marriage go now let my relationship go now now i decree and declare to every power and every force tying anyone's family the bible says declare ye that ye might be justified i command right now in the name of jesus every force that is responsible for delayed marriages divorce childlessness barrenness women serving men men serving younger ones serving elder ones i cost that power now i cost that spirit now a family where all the men die and leave the women to struggle a family where the women die a family where children feed their parents a family where poverty is the order of the day i cost it in the name of jesus Listen, I decree and declare over your life. I don't care how long it is. I stand tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. And I declare in the name of Jesus. I stand under the grace that God has given me. That if there is any man here, any woman, any family. That the devil has tied your marital destiny. I release you now. Go free. I release you now. Go free. That spirit that makes the man for you not to see you they pass you every day but they cannot see you i cause that spirit right now in jesus name the spirit that kills children in every marriage you see old people in the family all the young people get killed i arrest that spirit now in jesus name the spirit that makes every young man to be irresponsible only the women become responsible the young men are alive but they never do anything useful graduates but they live from hand to mouth i curse that spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ please just be patient with me everyone lift your hands everyone lift your hands we're rounding up everyone lift your hands the spirit of anger Jekotos katabaya anyone here under the sound of my voice suffering the spirit of anger it has destroyed your relationship 
it has destroyed everything about your life by the fire of the Holy Ghost I arrest that spirit right now I arrest that spirit come out of them now come out of them temper anger I come against it help them please for brothers for sisters inside outside overflow one two three and online I command that spirit be gone now the spirit of impatience I curse you impatience with the man impatience with the woman I command you to give way now the spirit of ingratitude that makes you never to say thank you you always feel you more should be done for you I command that spirit to die from your life now this is what brings peace in marriage if there is anybody alive from any village that has vowed that nobody will rise maritally I stand here in the name of Jesus I command the earth to open over that person I command the earth to open any grandmother any grandfather any necromancer any shrine holder any priesthood that is tying anyone's marriage I curse it in Jesus name Every lady and every guy that desires marriage this year in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God wherever your husband is or wherever your wife is I stand by this apostolic and prophetic unction I command that connection in the spirit I command that connection in the spirit you may not see wind you may not see rain but I command that connection now And anyone who is ready to settle down but finance is the limitation I cry to my God to arise and surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus now please all those who gave their lives to Christ there may not be very many of you but all those who said the prayer of salvation please I like you them only I like you to go this way to my right salvation prayers and then all those who came for the general prayers you can return back to your seat rejoicing very quickly give jesus a hand clap hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on